Hi, today we're going to get into tramming the tag mill. Uh, at the shop we call it sweeping the table. It's pretty much the same thing. But uh, here <clears throat> we're going to do one thing before we do anything else. This aluminum dovetail extrusion right here, this needs to be parallel with the Z column slide. So we're going to have to check this. You never know. It can get out of whack in one way or another. And there's an edge here that you could touch with a dial indicator. Right here, this little edge. You could put your indicator on there. I've got a piece of steel that I bolted to the table. And then we can go up and down. Like so. Now this one happened to be out uh, two thousandths. But what you do is uh, you could loosen these three and uh, keep this one kind of snug and then you could tap it a little over a little of this and that and then you can get this nice and straight so that it's parallel with the Z column slide. Then you're in a good spot where you can uh, go ahead and tram the table. Okay now that our black extrusion plate is lined up with the Z slide, the column slide. Uh, we've made our adjustments and we went back and forth. I'm using a one, two, three block here. Just something that you'd have at home. And we can zero, zero this out. And we're about, oh, we're about a half a thousandth out in the front here. And about the same in the back, half a thousandth, I could live with that. Uh, if you want to get it closer, you can, uh, behind the black plate, you can put uh, shims, piece of uh, newspaper, uh, phone book, phone book's two thousand thick, you can use that for a shim, and that will shim it uh, back and forth, and you can get it really, really close if you want. But this is certainly good enough. Uh, to get the job done right here. Now here's something that uh, was very very helpful uh, for me, helpful for me. It was the home dial indicator. Boy I can't tell you how many times I've been playing around and typing real fast and uh, not thinking what I was doing or talking to somebody else and I'd push the button and I'd crash into here or crash into there and then I'd have to start all over again and I would have to uh, uh, X0, Y0 the part, and so on and so forth. So I put this in here so that this is where home is all the time. Here it's set to zero and it's uh, an indicator that sits on the X axis. Just like so. And I have a little ball down here. In this case it's a 3 16 ball. It sits on a magnet I had laying around and I just put a ball and pounded it in a piece of metal and bolted it on. Uh, and the smaller the ball, of course, the more accurate this reading is going to be. But that way when I crashed, I could always go back to home. I could always dial in where home was and then I wouldn't have to X0, Y0 the part constantly over the, uh, all the time. It just made a big, big help. And there it is right back to zero again. So this is where home is. So at least I always know where home is. Now I'm going to take this apart and show you exactly how I did it. So fundamentally, here it is. It's just a magnet base from an old uh, uh, magnet that I had laying around, a, a dial indicator. And I put this uh, piece of metal on here, put the ball in it, and it just sticks to the side. Uh, standard, I don't know, 25, 30, dollars, not a very expensive indicator, and this I eyeballed the whole thing, just put it in the bridge port, I uh, didn't even get it uh, in the middle, uh, just so that I could use something so I didn't have to keep resetting uh, my machine for X0, Y0, and it really became very, very handy, it really did. So this goes in here, it clamps down, then it sits on the, the end, and instead of a three-quarter, uh, 1032. I use a one-inch 1032, but you know what? The three-quarter will still work. 
uh, that'll work just fine. It's just something that is so simple, but it has saved me. I can't even begin to tell you how much time uh, it has saved me. It's just uh, one of those handy things. I think everybody should have one. One of the things I'd like to touch on is that for my mill here at the house, I don't use an ER spindle. I use a lathe uh, spindle. And the reason I do that is because we make these adapters uh, right here <clears throat> so I can use a variety of tools. Uh, a lot of programs, for instance, that I write have tool number one, two, three, four, etc. And so it's just uh, so much easier to run this up to zero and put an M01 uh, option stop. Then I can change the uh, tool, which has already been set up ahead of time, and then I can uh, push a cycle start, and then I'll have the tool in there. Uh, it just makes the whole thing a whole lot faster. Uh, that's the only reason I do it. I guess if I was just going to have uh, one operation all the time pretty much, and th then I would use an ER spindle. Uh, but these uh, adapters use the ER collets as well. They're pretty cool. I like it. It's an easy thing.